pleasure uh, to interact with you to know of your work and uh, thank you for taking time out on a, on a significant day for you too uh, it happens to be uh, her mother's birthday as well uh, so it really means a lot that uh, you're here with us today uh, and uh, you know today uh, what we see here is uh, uh, familiar faces from the fintech community uh, primarily uh, you know we, we have an audience consisting of bankers investors fintech founders and uh, fintech mixer uh, as a platform has been conceptualized uh, to give the platform for some of these fintech founders uh, to get connected with banks and uh, financial uh, services institutions uh, in order to scale their business uh, first of all a very warm welcome and uh, without further ado we can get started uh, uh, with uncovering your journey uh, of course uh, i did uh, read a lot about you even prior to the fireside a uh, very inspiring story of how uh, you went to the us you worked in the financial services space uh, and felt that there is an opportunity or a problem to be solved for india at population scale uh, and you pioneered mobiquick at a time uh, when uh, the internet penetration was just taking off uh, to to kind of adventure or venture out into times when uh, it is early in the market and you know sort of really scale it to the place where you are today i'm sure it must have been a very very fascinating journey uh, first question to you would be on uh, if as an entrepreneur you could have done 100 different things uh, why did you choose fintech and uh, how did you start your journey thank you thank you so much for having me here uh, arsh and firstly to all the people sitting here today i think that's a presenter uh, you know, give a very long and arduous, uh, you know, bio for me. But, uh, you know, uh, for all the founders who are trying to get their startup of the land, I have to say that, uh, you know, I was in the same boat as you. I am still in the same boat as you. It may seem that I am not, but, you know, we all start uh, from zero. We all start from scratch. When nobody believes in the idea that you have, nobody thinks that it is viable. And it is your job as an entrepreneur to, uh, you know, start showing those proofs of concept to make it viable. And then every step, the proof to show that it is viable is different. Uh, so firstly, I just wanted to say that because uh, uh, for people who are just getting started, it might seem that uh, things are very lengthy road away. But I think if you have conviction and if you really have a great idea, you can't make it happen. And it dovetails very nicely to the question he asked me, which is that why FinTech? And why FinTech in India? And uh, it's very easy for me to say that, uh, you know, I had so much foresight, etc, etc. But that's not what that. Uh, I was working uh, as a product manager, uh, you know, in the payments uh, business uh, in the US. And we were launching at the time, we fell in several new markets. And after doing that for a few years, I thought that uh, there, there is and there will always be innovation work happening in every market, even developed markets. Here we are still building fundamental things and they are trying to build something, you know, more for convenience, uh, more for uh, uh, bringing convenience to the user, to the merchant, or just pricing uh, convenience, if that means. And I think AI would definitely do that more to the world. But when, when I was doing all of these projects and after one project after the other, it felt like, you know, uh, the, you know, it felt like there's more to be done in a market where, uh, you know, digital payments is just not there. It's not about bringing convenience because in a market, uh, markets like Europe or North America or even Australia for that matter, you will find or you could find a cart machine in every cafe, in every Kirana store and you could find a credit card and debit card in every pocket. Yes. That was not the case in India and by the way, it is still not the case in India despite the fact that so much work has happened in the last 10 to 15 years. So that is why I thought that the need for uh, everything fintech, starting from payments to credit to insurance to investment products is so great uh, in uh, the developing world at the time. This is, you know, 14 years ago, I was thinking this. And of course, China was an option. Latin America was an option. But then I thought, yeah, so I should come back to India and build this in India. So that was the conviction. And I can tell you that uh, it was very hard. Even my own family members would not believe that. Why are you doing this? India is a cash market. Who is going to use digital payments? So the first, I think three, four years were the toughest. 
and after that you know there were enough proof points that the conviction started to build because we started in the end of 2009 2011 android and uh, you know play store was in india and apps started getting put there and we were one of the earliest apps and we benefited a lot from that and 2012 you know we were bootstrapped but profitable there were enough i think we had 2 million consumers we had applied for the prefer or license to rbi and corded we were one of the early recipients so you know one two three four proof points were there and so then the confidence level goes up uh so i think that that was uh, sort of the beginning of the journey and i till date i still think that it is only despite everything we have done in our journey and despite where india has reached i think at a macro level india had about 25 million digitally transacting users at the time uh and that number you know uh based on any estimate is 350 400 million now as in people using digital payments actively when uh, phones or cards so we have come a long way uh but you know we are a country of 1.3 1.4 billion so there's a uh, opportunities the market is going to even double from here and uh, within fintech payments is the least common denominator payments is what we reach first but everything else is behind it credit is behind it investing is behind it insurance is behind it uh so i personally believe that fintech india even now is an infinite tap opportunity so the more the merrier the more startups that jump into it the more founders that jump into it the better it is amazing amazing uh so those are uh, some great uh, sort of pointers uh, on how what could look at the fintech journey uh, i am also interested to know and this is one of the hot topics for the evening is uh, finding your first customer i think that is one of the biggest challenges that we have seen uh, fintech face yeah. and uh, we are keen to know some anecdotes some interesting stories on uh, how long it took for you to find your first customer and what were the interesting encounters about the way So see, our so Mobikoin's journey we have evolved since where we started and where we are today. But we started as a digital wallet on a website on day one. So the consumer we got on the first day. People came organically, not hundreds or thousands, but few people came. I don't remember the exact number, but it was definitely more than ten, twenty customers who came and registered and created an account, and we were like. ये कौन लोग हैं मतलब अनिनो वेबसाइट है आज ही डाली है ना आपके अकाउंट भी बना रहे हैं वेरिफिकेशन भी कर रहे हैं पैसे भी डाल रहे हैं लाइक आई वाज जस्ट लाइक यू नो क्वाइट एक्साइटेड बाय दैट प्रोस्पेक्ट सो एनी कंज्यूमर वाज इजी बट इन आवर बिजनेस यू नो द लार्जेस्ट एंड द इंपॉर्टेंट मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पार्टनर इन बिल्डिंग अ डिजिटल पेमेंट्स बिजनेस इज अ बैंक So for us, getting a partner bank, as you know, in our supply chain, uh, that's how the money moves, was the most important thing for us. And we were trying to get a direct payment gateway integration with the bank instead of going via, uh, you know, uh, third-party payment companies, which we are tied up. We are tied up with CCI Avenue and EBS and Builders at the time, but we wanted to go direct to a bank so that we could get uh, better success rates, etc. So I can tell you that it took me. Almost nine or ten months. Like I started at the beginning of the year um, in 2010, and it was only towards Diwali where I had reached the steps where I had convinced the regional people, the Bombay people, the risk people, the business people, the finance people, like all kinds of thing that you know, yes, Adam Arthur needs. I mean, when they even survive, firstly, and then secondly, what are the credits? Do they even know what they are saying? Will this go anywhere? Is it worth my while? From a bank's perspective or their team's perspective, is it even worth our while to do an integration with these? So I spent nine months, eight nine months, where they had said yes, and then the contract work had started, and the contract work went on for another two months, and in the tenth month, like everything is ready with that three hundred paper stamp paper, and we have signed and given it with the board resolution, and now they have to sign in, and I'm chasing week after week. And it's not happening. So then I said, okay, I'll just fly to Bombay. I flew to Bombay and I started telling them, "Kya, toh main roz aaye hoon office mein. Aapko batao bhi yehi. Where is this start?" Long story short, uh, you know, uh, the major uh, private bank they did not want to move ahead, but they were just dilly dallying between different decision makers, and nobody was giving me a straight answer. But finally, I got out of it after I met one of the key people in Mumbai. 
सो देन आई आई रिमेंबर आई कॉल विद विद सेट यू नीड तो नहीं हो रही है मतलब मेरी पूरी नौ दस महीने की हमारी मेहनत गई सो इट लाइक अब आई सेट इट्स ओके आई हैव मेड अप माय माइंड आई एम नॉट कमिंग बैक टू दिल्ली अंटिल आई एम बैक टू दिस सो एंड यू नो वी आर रेस हियर इट दिल्ली गुड गांव सो आई जस्ट से रिपोर्ट एंड आई सेट नेक्स्ट डे ऑनवर्ड्स आई स्टार्टेड गोइंग टू ऑल द अदर प्राइवेट बैंक्स हु वी हैड स्पोकन विद बट वी वर नाउ नॉट uh doing enough leg work with because we knew that we had one d so that is my biggest uh, mistake and learning that you should never give up on your plan b and plan c and keep chasing it but i'm happy to tell you that the deal that we eventually did was the largest private bank in the country at the time and even now and that deal happened i mean the deal was the discussion happened in two straight days i mean i think i got the answer from one bank on tuesday and uh, friday the deal was verbally closed i shook hands and then flew back on the weekend and then all the paperwork and everything happened and in 15 days the contract was signed and the integration had started so that is my learning not to give up and uh, but yeah chase but it was said the first one can take time but you make so many mistakes in that that you will do better in the second and the third one yes. uh, amazing uh, story you passed now uh, and i did uh, read somewhere that it almost took about a year to sort of find uh the first major black partnership so to say i think at rbi it's the mandate is uh more to uh reduce the friction between fintechs and the banks so that they are able to work uh, together more effectively and uh you know what you uh bring to light is uh a journey that has transitioned over time and i'm very sure that uh the product in itself would have gone through many changes uh i'm sure by and large your your uh mandate is being met and i also read that uh, there's a lot of financial inclusion agenda that you have uh, at uh, mopi quick uh, so would like to know from your uh, side in terms of what it took to iterate the product how were you trying to ensure that you were con- consistently relevant in the market over so many years that's 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 a <laughs> that's a lot i would say it's so so we started as a digital wallet on the website i think uh 2011 we started our first app we were on the e-commerce checkouts of several uh, platforms then from e-commerce it went into physical retail then uh, uh going from large format stores it was smaller stores qr codes that the whole demon journey happened and then by that time we had realized that look we we already had a large platform even prior to demonetization but then the point of view was that okay we have lots of users uh, lots of merchants and uh, but payments is always going to be a one one and a half percent revenue business so how does one monetize better and uh, we had already started work on uh, uh you know a lo- applying machine learning to a lot of data that we had to figure out that how can we cross sell other financial products and so last 5 years our focus has been on bringing uh, a digital credit uh, as well as uh, investment products to both our consumers and our merchants we focus more on the consumer first but we'll try to bring them more to small merchants as well and uh, while there are a lot of players and fintech market in india is always um, you know uh, two different players trying to go after different strata of the society we are very focused on uh, you know the bharat the middle india which is uh, an average indian making 25 to 50000 rupees per month in earnings mostly self employed and uh, mostly living in the tier 2 tier 3 tier 4 and 5 cities and towns of india and uh, it is like seeing that all the large uh, banking and financial institutions Uh, are focused on sort of the top hundred, hundred and fifty million, and we are going below that. And we are going below that, and therefore, when the users are transacting on our platform, we have enough alternate data on there uh, that we are able to start give them their first experience of credit, and then similarly, first experience of investing. Also, our users are not as savvy that they can, you know, directly go to a zero tha or invest uh, or any other platform, and. you know not dance savvy also as users of uh you know digital lending platforms only where you have to give a lot of information to get a loan so most of our users are such that uh, they have done a kyc with us uh, for using our payments app and then based on their vintage and spends on our platform we are able to understand their profile much better and that is what helps us 
connect them to our lending partners and enable them to get their first credit or first investing experience in very simple and curated products. So yeah, we are trying to do a lot of, uh, you know, uh, inclusion work while at the same time trying to build a profitable business. Oh, that's fantastic. I mean, uh, what I could understand, I mean, this was, uh, I was really curious because the payments industry as such uh, is a very competitive industry. Of late, a lot of uh, startups have come in. And one thing uh, that differentiates the successful startups uh, from the others is finding their niche. And that is something that you very well uh, brought up uh, in terms of saying that uh, the middle income group uh, of Bharat is, is the right segment that you built an experience uh, centered around them. Uh, I would, uh, on this note, I would like to sort of uh, uh, understand what is the tipping point for a fintech, you know, to from being uh, just able to find their first five or 10 customers to be able to scale to the level that you have done today. Uh, I'm sure both from a fundraising perspective and from a customer acquisition perspective, uh, as founders, you know that you go, you're going to reach the next top way. Uh, were you able to, uh, when, did you sense such a transition happening in your business as you were scaling? No, absolutely. I think uh, building a company, building a business at every level has its own challenges, right? Like, I still remember, you know, when it was four, five of us, the first challenge was hiring. How to convince people to join you because you're so small. Um, and by the way, at that time, it was not cool to join a startup when we started. So I still remember when uh, we had our nurse engineer who had joined us, he had left Infosys to join us. And after he was with us for two, three years, uh, he was like, yeah, no girl doesn't want to marry me, my father is very frustrated. He left me to leave Infosys, he left me to move it quick. They are not able to explain. So it was hilarious, you know. But coming back to the story of hiring, uh, building the business, fundraising, everything was challenging. You know, right now we have, uh, you know, you have, you're trying to do pitches here. Uh, we have so many seed funds, accelerators, angel investors. The ecosystem is far more evolved in 2023 as opposed to, uh, you know, 2009, 2010, uh, when we uh, started. So I feel almost like a dinosaur now <laughs> from that perspective. Um, but I do think that because you have to do everything uh, the hard way and enough resources are not available, you also develop a very strong, uh, you know, resilience that uh, there's no other option and you have to figure out how to do it. So, yeah, I think we had to show the viability of our business and, you know, the first three, four years that we bootstrapped the company with very limited resources or savings that we had from having worked for four, five years uh, with the founders. Uh, we actually were profitable when we raised our first check. Series A we had raised from uh, peak 15 at the time it was called Sequoia. Uh, we were profitable. We had some two and a half million users. We had the license and that's how the first check happened. And the joke is that I had we had to do no manner to do Series B. Some investor came to Oroi Gurgaon. Some backer called us that few investors have come. Do you want to come and have coffee with them? We just went just like that without any preparation. And like the next week or 10 days, we know that that investor wants to invest. So series, uh, you know, A and B happened very easily, like without having to travel uh, outside of uh, India. Okay. Uh, series C we raised in, uh, you know, 2016. It was extremely tough. We, and we didn't know that it would be so tough, but it became extremely tough because, uh, you know, there was a town in the internet market. So it was... Definitely because uh, I knew that Bipin was traveling all over the world trying to raise money and uh, the market was not good. And incidentally, uh, you know, I had just taken two months of maternity leave uh, because I, uh, you know, our child was born. And then we could see that money is running out. So uh, I was in Chandigarh and my parents' place, uh, you know, raising my one month old kid. And I was, and so at that time I have done virtual calls. And since we have bankers here, I'm very happy to tell you I raised our first debt ever uh, as an unprofitable fintech uh, that took from ICITI Bank. And that debt helped us survive for six months. And within that six months, all the fundraising trips that we've been had done abroad helped us to raise a big uh, Series C. 
So there will be easy days when without doing much manner, you know, things are served to you, but there will be extremely hard days and it is on the hard days that what you do matters. So uh, resilience and, uh, you know, sticking to a viable plan, you know, helps. And after that also there have been many ups and downs in the industry. It's been super competitive. You know that uh, players like Google enter the market. I will get trillion dollar balance sheet. How can you compete with that? You can't compete with that. So what do you do? You run away, you shut shop. No, you find a differentiated value proposition that you know that a large global, which has a lot of money, will not go into because they will have their constraints. Uh, and then that's that, you know, that niche that you find, the differentiation that you find, that's where you try to, you know, build your uh, stress. So, yeah, I mean, I answered some of your questions with regard to, uh, you know, fundraising and then, I just zoom uh, uh, zoom through a little and say that by the time the next internet uh, ups and downs were happening, I think in 2018-19, we had made up our mind in 18 that no more getting on planes and flying all over the world. We have to become profitable, all which are our name. And uh, it's a large market, there will always be opportunity, but how much money do we want to burn on user acquisition? First, we can become profitable and then we can think about how to grow further. So we decided in 2018, uh, right, right after building a lot of money in demonetization and acquiring more merchants and more customers, that we did the first contribution margin profit. So we made a plan. Uh, I I hired for the first time a three member FPNA team, all three women, very posse. They went around and made all the business heads, business leads, product managers, everybody. You have to stick to the plan. Every week, every month, we're sticking to the plan. And I think in a record eight, nine months, we turned contribution margin profitable. And so you did not look profitable. And then we set the deadline that, okay, in so much time, we have to turn like, you know, a bit up. And that way, you know, you, you have a lot more, you know, control on your destiny in your life. Uh, we are now running profitably for the last three quarters. Uh, we achieved that milestone for a short period of time. Uh, but because of, we previously also, but because of the COVID, you know, it got delayed a little bit. Okay. How do, uh, you know, how, how does a couple sort of work together? Uh, you know, I'm sure there are a lot of interesting dynamics uh, that at home and at work. Uh, so we're very interested to know the story of how, uh, you know, both of you co-founders got together. How did you see this big opportunity? And how do you manage uh, sort of the work and uh, as well as the the... The personal side of things is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very curious. I got married recently and, uh, and there was a conversation uh, with my wife and uh, she said uh, initially she was very interested uh, to say that, uh, you know, I would want to become an entrepreneur. Let's try out something together. And after uh, two brainstorming sessions, uh, she she vowed never to work with me. <laughs> and, uh, and that's what, you know, led me to the curiosity of how You've been able to successfully scale uh, to this level. Okay, so I'm not advising anyone, uh, <laughs> you know, for uh, people who are dating or are married to work together. I do not advise. It is additional stress on your relationship is what I will say, uh, most honestly. Uh, the fact that many people have been able to work, uh, make it work, we have been able to make it work. Uh, I think that's great, but it's not easy. It's just a little more harder um, is what I would say. How how did we get together? So actually, we didn't know each other. Most people uh, who start companies, they know each other, having worked with each other, or having studied with each other. Uh, no such thing for us. Uh, right after my BTEC, I had gone abroad to study, and then I pursued my professional career there. So when I moved back to India, I actually had no uh, you know professional connects, especially not in Delhi and CR, because I studied in Chalandar. And uh, I uh, studied prior to that in Gujarat. So uh, most of the people I knew uh, were either working in uh, Bangalore or Bombay, but not so much over here. So we met socially at uh, one of my friends had invited a group of people on a weekend. Uh, and, you know, in a small 20 people gathering, all different people are talking over there. And uh, generally we hear people talking about sports, politics, movies, etc. I heard somewhere somebody said startups. He coach started bull right? Then I found, I went towards the corner and I said, hey, I'm also uh, looking at doing a startup. So that's sort of how we got talking. And we became friends uh, over a period of time. 
and then we both encouraged each other to do our own startups. Okay. So that's the main thing. We were both trying to do our own startups. It was not the plan to start up together. Uh, and uh, Bipin got started before me. And for the first five to six months that he was uh, building Movie Quick, I was not part of it. Uh, I was, um, you know, staying away from it because I could see a possibility of personal life also coming together. But uh, at some point, you know, I realized that why am I staying so much away from this, uh, you know, platform that he's building? which is so close to what I've already worked on in the US with PayPal. So I have a lot of expertise and why am I hell-bent on doing my own thing? Uh, you should, we should just join hand. And then I knew that the risk will always be 2x because if something goes wrong in the company, then it will definitely affect our personal lives also and vice versa. But after, uh, then say, resisting it for a good five to six months, I finally, uh, you know, we started working together and then I think we got subsequently married another two, two and a half years later. And we've been building since then. How have we survived? Uh, we try to keep ourselves, uh, you know, clearer demarcation of responsibilities so that we don't bump into each other the holding the office. Uh, we have fewer things uh, that need, uh, that we need to collaborate on. Mostly uh, org structuring, leadership hiring, or uh, key financial planning, uh, or some shareholder meetings, board meetings, etc. Otherwise, our area of work uh, over the period of time, you try to keep it separate. And also, since we made this mistake of having our personal and professional lives both intertwined, we also took a vow early on that we will not hire anyone from our friend circle or family or anyone that we know. So there's nobody in the company that, you know, we have known from personally or professionally or have any linkages with. So that it has to be a professional company because this is a... This is a question that you will also face difficulty uh, as you try to build the team, as you try to raise capital. Because people, some people think of it as a positive, but many people also think of it as a negative. So you will have to answer extra questions if you decide to take this route.